Hello, today we are covering lesson 12.6, volume and surface area of spheres. You guys will be able to find each of these. So our new vocab is great circle, pole, and hemisphere. Surface area of spheres. Recall that a sphere is the locus of all points in space that are a given distance from a given point called the center of the sphere. So it's very similar to the idea of a circle, except now it is in 3D space. So a radius of a sphere is a segment from the center to a point on the sphere. You'll notice here it is labeled there on this sphere, but it could come out this way, it could go out this way. There's so many options. A chord of a sphere is a segment that connects any two points on the sphere. So it is right here. A diameter of a sphere, sorry, a diameter of a sphere is a chord that contains the center, just like the diameter contains the center in a normal circle, a diameter contains the center in a sphere. The great circle also has to go through a diameter. And a tangent to a sphere is a line that intersects the sphere in exactly one point. So the surface area of a sphere has a nice equation to it. The surface area is equal to 4 pi r squared. Now, if you think about a ball, the surface area is around the outside. The volume is the air or the water that would fill the ball. So to find the surface area of the sphere where, um, is what we need to do, and then we leave our answer in pi. Now, our surface area equation is equal to 4 pi r squared. So really this pi r squared is like the area of the great circle and then we multiply it by 4. So we have 4 times pi times our radius which they give us which is 4.5. So we take 4.5 squared. We get 4 times pi times 20.25. We end up getting 81 pi as our solution to our surface area, and our label is square inches. Okay. On to the next one. It's very similar. They give us the radius once again, so it's 4 times pi times our radius, 6.25 squared. We get 156.25 pi, and this time it is square inches for our surface area. Now, if we have a hemisphere, we have to treat this a little differently. We know the surface area is half the surface area of a normal sphere. But now we also need to deal with this great circle. We need to add to it the area of the great circle to get the whole surface area. So half the area of a sphere with the radius of 3.7 millimeters, um, and then add the area of the great circle. So our equation for a semicircle is 4 pi r squared. That would just be the area of the sphere, but we want half of it. And then we have to add the great circle pi r squared. Now I'm going to go ahead and reduce this guy. So I have 2 pi r squared plus pi r squared. I get 13.69 pi here. I get 27.38 pi here. And then I can just add these. And I get 41.07 pi millimeters squared for my surface area. Oops. Let's try that again. Okay. 
All right, now we're going to find the surface area of the sphere given the circumference and not the radius. Now it's pretty easy to find the radius given the circumference because we know the circumference of any circle, especially in this case we need the great circle, is equal to pi r squared. So you, or sorry, that would be the area. The circumference is equal to 2 pi r. So 2 pi r equals 10 pi, because that is the circumference, you go ahead and solve for r by dividing by 2 pi. And you end up getting that the radius is equal to 5. So then you just plug that into your surface area equation. And you get your solution of 100 and pi square feet for your surface area. And then if you are given the area this time, we also need to find the radius. We know the great circle has an area of pi r squared, and that will help us find our radius given the area. Oops, I didn't write this right. 220, not 200. There we go. My bad, hopefully you guys caught that. We have our radius is equal to 8.368. And then we can go ahead and plug that in. I'm not going to actually round. I'm going to use my exact uh, de decimal that I have here. So I end up getting 280.11 pi. And for this example, I'm actually going to go ahead and multiply this by pi. Because um, I want to show you guys something real quick. So these are both good answers for our surface area. But if you take a look at this equation for surface area, You'll notice that the area of the great circle is actually included in that equation. So if you saw that and it didn't want the answer in terms of pi, you could have easily said the surface area is equal to 4 times the area of the great circle, and you would have much more quickly gotten the exact same answer. Just a heads up. Now the volume of spheres. Suppose a sphere with radius r contains infinitely many pyramids with vertices at the center of the sphere. Each pyramid has height r and base area b. The sum of the volumes of all the pyramids equals the volume of the sphere. Therefore, our equation for the volume of the sphere is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. So notice the area idea, that pi r squared thing that we just did before, will not work because it's pi r cubed now. One thing that I do want to point out, though, is that if you want, you could actually write this for pi r cubed divided by 3. That's totally valid. So you're going to find the volume of sphere with a great circle circumference of 30 pi centimeters. Leave answers in terms of pi. To find the radius of the sphere, the circumference of the great circle is 2 pi r. So if we set these equal, we go ahead and divide by 2 pi. We end up getting our radius is 15. Then we can plug that into our volume equation. 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. 
So 15 cubed times 4, then divided by 3 is equal to 4,500 pi. And then it's volume, so it's cubic centimeters is what would fill the inside of this sphere. All right, and if we are given, find the volume of the hemisphere with a diameter of six feet, leave answers in terms of pi, we actually only need half of the volume. We don't have to worry about that great circle stuff that we did for surface area. It's literally just half the amount of what a sphere would hold. So you can set it up like this, or you could just find the area of the sphere and divide by two. Either way, I'm gonna do the way that's already set up because I can notice these two reduce to give me then two thirds pi. This would be radius cubed. We know our radius is half of our diameter, so it's three. So we have two times pi times 27 divided by three. These guys reduce, so I end up getting 18 pi and it is volume. So it is cubic feet. And lastly, a very simple one. Find the volume of the sphere in terms of pi. We have four pi r cubed, so eight cubed divided by three. And we end up getting either 2048 over 3 pi, which is totally fine, or 682.6 repeating pi. These are both fine. This one is, the second one's just a repeating decimal. But both of those would be good answers. All right, have a great evening.